The International Games Week website has a number of games that you can download to play at home. If you follow the URL in the Facebook page post or the one that you see on screen now, you'll be able to go and download any of the games. We are going to demonstrate the game Caterpillar Feast, which is a fairly straightforward game that you can play with any number of players in your family. All you'll need are four six-sided dice. We have lots of six-sided dice. Tracy's got about a million in her box. 36. I have 12. Mm -hmm. You will need four for each person. They don't have to look nice and match like ours do. Any dice robbed from any other games will be fine. You'll also need a printout of the sheet from the International Games Week website for each player and a pen or pencil to fill in the sheet. So to begin, you'll need to choose a player to be the person who goes first. We'll go ladies first, so I'll let Tracy roll first. You could also roll your dice and have the highest or lowest number going first, however you want to play it. So, the aim of the game is to try and fill in as many squares as possible on the leaves on your tree. The leaves are numbered from 2 to 12, but there is no number 1 and no number 7. You'll need to remember this. The aim is to fill in all of the blank squares. If you can't do that, then there are penalties which we'll come to in a moment. And then at the end of the game, the person with the number of squares filled in, plus some other events that will happen, uh, will be the winner. So. Tracy will roll first, so you need to roll four dice. Okay. And from those four dice, you need to choose one die to remove and not use at all. Okay. Uh, take away. I've got a three, a six, and two ones. So I'm going to take away a one and leave myself with a six, a three. And a one. Okay, so these are the dice numbers that you will use for this round of the game. And what you need to do is you need to choose two of the dice to add together. That number will be the number leaf that you're going to fill in. And with the third die, that's how many squares you'll colour in on the leaf. Now you have a six and a one, but you have to remember that there is no, no number leaf seven. number seven. So you can't yes. add those two together. No. So, I am going to um, add together the three and the one to make leaf number four. And I'm going to colour in six squares on leaf number four. Yes, so... Oh. Well, I would if my pencil lead hadn't broken. <laughs> so Tracy's obviously chosen to use the highest number possible because it means that she will fill in the most number of squares on that leaf possible, remembering that the more squares you fill in, the better. So it's now my go, so I will roll four dice, and I will choose to remove one. I'm going to remove the lowest number, which is a two, which leaves me with a three, a four, and a five. Now again, I can't add together the three and the four, because that makes seven, and there is no leaf number seven. So I'll add the 5 and the 3 together, which makes 8, leaving me with 4 to fill in on my square. So on leaf number 8, I will fill in 4 squares. This leaves me with 5 squares to fill in. So you'll notice on my leaf that I have a block of 3 and a block of 2 squares left. The squares that you colour in have to be connected. So when I want to fill in that leaf now, I'll have to have a three, and then on a separate round, I'll have to have a two. I couldn't fill in all five in one go because the squares are not all connected. So it's now Tracy's turn to roll again. Okay, I have a six, a three, and two twos. So you remove one die. Okay. So I'm going to actually take away the six this time because I can add my two twos to get back to leaf number four and there are the three that I need to complete that leaf. 
one, two, three. So that leaf is complete. When you complete a leaf, you draw a circle around the little ladybird which is on the leaf. That ladybird has a number of spots on it and at the end you get to add those spots onto your total for completed leaves. So it's now my second turn. So I can roll my four dice. Right. So I'll take away one of the sixes. I'll add together the three and the two to make five, and then I can colour in six squares on leaf number five. Leaving me with three squares to complete that leaf. Tracy's turn again. We'll play another round and then we'll advance to the end of the game. Gosh, that's a high rolling round. So I've got two sixes and two fives. Um, now I think I'm going to add together my two sixes, remove a five, and then colour in five squares on leaf number 12. And that leaves me five on that one before I can complete it. I have a three and a four and two sixes. So I'll take away the three, I'll add the two sixes together to make twelve and I'll colour in four squares on leaf number twelve. You continue doing this for as long as it takes to fill in your leaves. This roll demonstrates the position where you want to complete a leaf but you have two sets of squares which are separated and are not connected. So in this case I want to complete leaf number four. I've rolled a one, a three, a four and a six. So if I chose the one and the three to add together to choose leaf number four and took away the six I have four remaining, but I'm not allowed to colour in the four squares because they're not connected, they were separated. I'd have to have a roll where I have a one, a three, a six and a two, for example. Take away the six. I'd add together the one and the three to choose that leaf and then colour in two squares with my two. On a separate round, I'd have to colour in the other two. At this stage of the game you can see that lots of the leaves have been completed or only have a few squares left. This is when the game becomes more difficult. If you cannot add together two dice to choose a leaf and then use the third die to colour in the correct number of squares and in which case you can't go at all, then you need to colour in one of the knots on the tree. The game then passes over to the next player. They in turn will see if they can complete one of their leaves or colour in some squares. If they can't go, they would colour in a knot and so on. When a player completes all ten knots on their tree, the owl flies out and chases the caterpillar away. The caterpillar has to hide, and that is the end of the game for everybody. When the game ends, you add up to see who is the winner. First, you add up how many leaves you have completed. In this case, three of the leaves are completed. You get ten points for each completed leaf. Each leaf that is completed, you add up the number of spots on the ladybird, Six on this one, four on this one, and four on this one makes 14. You then subtract any squares which are not coloured in from the leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen are not coloured in. So in this case, I would score three lots of ten points for my completed leaves, which is 30 plus 14 
for my ladybird spots, which is 44. I would lose 15 points for my uncoloured in squares, which gives me a grand total of 29. If the other player's scores come to less than 29, yay, I've won. If they come to more than 29, boo, I lost. And that is how you play Caterpillar Feast. The printout from the website has full instructions to follow, but hopefully watching this short video will have given you an idea as to how those instructions work too. I hope you all enjoy playing this game. Do let us know if you have a go, and let us know if you win or you get beaten soundly by your children. Happy gaming!